Hello, I want to show you my balls. These are very special balls. I collected them on the railroad tracks in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is just about as far away from most things as you can get without leaving the country. This is my ball sack. This is where I keep my extra balls that don't get to live in the display jar. I display some of my balls because I have plans for them. The other balls get tucked away so I don't have to think about them. This is what my balls look like up close. They are iron ore pellets. These get loaded onto giant ships and sent all over the place to get turned into things that iron is made into. Look how pretty they are. They make fun sounds. I really enjoy playing with these balls. I have never owned a single stress toy that is as effective as these balls. I said that last sentence out loud as people were walking by my house and I truly and deeply hope that they did not hear me. Since I'm pretty sure that they did hear me because I'm right in front of an open window, I've committed the rest of my afternoon into melting into the earth from embarrassment, but at least I have this ball sack to help me feel better. And no, I cannot sell you ball sacks like mine, it is one of a kind. I dropped one of them there, but I caught it. If you've made it this far into my ball sack jokes, you probably don't care what I'm actually going to be doing with these, but since you're here, the plan is to try to turn them into ink. I have a whole bunch of them, and I think I can go get a whole bunch more pretty much whenever I want to, as long as I evade the police and the railroad commission, or whatever they are called. Love you guys, but I don't want to get in trouble. But if you didn't want me to have these, why do you keep spilling them all over the railroad tracks? So I'm going to be turning them into ink, I hope. I'm going to add a bunch of different chemistry to each of these and just see what different colors they turn. They are iron based. They can turn a variety of colors. The first thing that I'm going to be trying is sodium carbonate or soda ash. It is very basic like me. It is an 11 on the pH scale. Be very careful with it. The reason why I've chosen this piece of chemistry first is because I do something called lake pigment extraction and this is one of the two ingredients. I have a bunch of it. I'm not measuring anything because I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm putting about a tablespoon in there. I don't know how much water I'm going to end up doing probably just to fill the thing up we don't know what's gonna happen we collectively not i i also don't know what's going to happen just in case you didn't know what it looks like to pour water into a jar and made sure to include this clip of it it started off by making some bubbles happen and i thought these looked pretty good so i filmed them for a long time i actually wasted a lot of energy on trying to get some really good shots of these bubbles so appreciate the bad shots this is as good as it gets oh you didn't think i was actually going to include them no they are all going to be here. Look, here's another one. Okay, so I got this new phone a few days ago because my Apple killed itself. Now I have a Samsung. It has a million cameras on the back and they are all way better than anything I'm used to dealing with on a cell phone. A lot of this was me just playing with the camera to see what happens. Here I am playing with the 20 times zoom feature that isn't particularly clear because I don't know what I'm doing yet, but it exists and it feels like I have a microscope in my phone. Oh, by the way, you should not try to do this just because I'm doing this. You know what would happen if you weren't paying attention and if I wasn't paying attention and we were just doing this together like you were copying me. See all these bubbles that are happening in the jar? It's a glass jar. And you know, and if you weren't really thinking about it, or if you've never done anything like this, you might think that you were going to seal that jar up, that it needed to be sealed. Because that's what jars are for, is to be sealed. They have lids, you put them on there, it's all a part of the agreement of using a jar is you put the lid on top. Nuh uh not with this. Oh no. <laughs> that thing would explode. And then you would have iron ore explosion, water, bubble, pH 11, mess all over the place because you were copying me. Don't copy things off the internet. Definitely don't copy what I'm doing. Until I tell you that this is a tutorial, don't do what I do. Just watch what I do. If I create an explosion mess at home, that's my own problem. We live in crazy Sue happy times. There's a girl out there who sued her parents for being born and she won. I don't need y'all figuring out a way to sue me because you copied what I did in a video. But yeah, look at this. So I've put the lid on here just to show you that I'm serious. If you make something that makes bubbles in it, don't put a lid on it. It might blow up. Unless it's specifically a vessel designed for bubble making liquids. Those things do exist. Champagne bottles, etc. But definitely not this crappy little jar from the dollar store. Man, this really could have been a giant disaster though. I put the lid on this and I was about to put it away and leave it there for a few weeks. Well, don't leave it sealed up, it'll explode. So while it did whatever it's going to do in the science world, man, I would have come back to an exploded jar. There's no freaking way it would have lived through this. Anyway, somehow this turned into over a four minute video, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off here. You know what bubbles look like. I will check back with you, but don't expect it to be quickly. I can't even pretend to tell you how long this is going to take. I have no clue. I'll do updates every time I think about it or whenever you guys ask me. Goodbye.